Hello, my name is Tari Reinke. I'm a Green Member of the European Parliament and since the Corona crisis uh, I have been stuck in Brussels and what I have been mostly concerned with uh, are the attacks on rule of law and fundamental rights that we have seen in some member states where actually this crisis and measures that are being taken uh, to fight the virus are used uh, in a way to undermine uh, fundamental rights of minorities, for example. Uh, most notably, um, the situation in Hungary, where you might have seen Viktor Orban has gotten a majority to rule by decree. The parliament is um, basically taken out of power. Um, and in this context, he has uh, pushed for a change of the legislation on legal gender recognition so that practically trans people uh, cannot change their gender marker in their documents anymore. Um, it's not a surprise that this is coming. The Hungarian government has always worked against the LGBTI community in Hungary. Still in this crisis, um, the specific situation is being abused and I think it speaks volume about um, how in danger fundamental rights in Europe are. The second thing that uh, I have worked on a lot is the situation in Poland. Um, you might have heard of uh, a couple of years ago a proposal to uh, introduce an, a complete ban on abortion uh, in, in the Polish law. A similar proposal has now been put forward again. It wouldn't mean a total abortion, um, but almost, um, because it would um, uh, scrap an indication which leads to 98% um, of all legal abortions in Poland. Obviously, feminist organizations, people standing up for fundamental rights in Poland uh, have tried to intervene and to strongly oppose. But because of the situation, it is not as easy. Protests in the streets are prohibited. Um, so the community organized um, uh, online protests, but also try to have protests staged from cars while they are waiting to get into a shop or a bakery. And um, still, obviously, from a democratic point of view, the situation is far from ideal to have such an important debate. Uh, in the European Parliament, we have said that we stand in full solidarity um, with the activists fighting against this law in Poland. And there was a second proposal uh, introduced um, that would criminalize the provision of information on sexuality and sexual and reproductive rights to minors. Also, this is deeply worrying and problematic and part of an authoritarian backlash against fundamental rights, against sexual and reproductive rights, um, driven by a very, I must say, now powerful network of extreme right Christian fundamentalist organizations that are operating not only in Poland, um, but in many other member states in the European Union. And I can only say that for the European Parliament, um, we will stay vigilant. Uh, these two laws have now been moved to the committees, so they are um, in a situation right now where they are being prepared for a second reading in the Polish Parliament. They have not been rejected, so we have to uh, absolutely keep our eyes on the situation in Poland. And I can only appeal to you when things like this happen, uh, when we see the abortion law, but also the criminalization of sex education in Poland, but also the attack on trans rights in Hungary. It is important for the organizations, for the civil society on the ground, um, that they get solidarity from different parts of Europe, from the whole world, uh, that we organize um, solidarity actions online and also, if possible, offline. So uh, if you see things like this happening, especially in a situation uh, where people cannot take it to the street, where people cannot protest due to the corona measures, um, stand in solidarity, use it, uh, use your social media uh, in order to support their efforts. They are very often in a very, very difficult situation. So I think our support um, is uh, important and very much needed. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.